All right, guys. So today I want to talk to you about another type of enchanter class. Uh, this one is called a vestments monk, right? Uh, the difference uh, between the enchanter and the vestments monk is that the vestments monk has a lot more survivability. As you can see here as well, he also has insane amounts of crit chance, crit damage, we got damage modifiers, which don't really matter as much for this. We've got mana cost modifiers, like everything's reduced by 60%. We've got 75% chance to dodge, as well as we can counter and deal a little bit of damage back when we do dodge. Uh, and we are also around 49% healing given. And then we also have some base healing of 160 more as well. Now. This will be a lot higher once we get an actual staff. The problem is with this build is that it requires a lot of gear that is global loot. Like the ancient staff is a global staff. It will take a while to find one of these at tier three, right? You just have to play until you get lucky enough to find it. Uh, there is an alternative to the staff. It's not as good, but you're going to find it a lot sooner uh, at a higher you know tier the unfortunate thing to that is though is it is basically a blue item so uh, but what you're looking for with the vestments monks build is you're looking for a main stat now the reason we choose the vestments or you know anything with intelligence is because these are items that I have currently that are going to be the highest in stat value that are not being prioritized by my DPS units and or not being utilized by, you know, other types of classes that, you know, normally would use mixed stats, right? So mixed stats are not good for this. You want pure either strength, dex, or intelligence. You can do this with any type of build or this type of monk type build. Uh, as you can see, we are at 225 in all attributes in this build currently, and we do not have max gear yet, right? We're, we're getting close to it, but we're pretty far away still. Uh, like I said, these are mostly items that can only be found via global loot, right? Uh, now, the cool thing about this build is that if you were to look at our regenerate right here, it says 516 to 698, right? Uh, but when this crits, it's going to heal for 375% more. Now, if you were to look at our enchanter, our crit damage or, you know, our crit damage which is how much more you're going to heal for is only at 64 percent now if you look at our regenerate here sure it's a thousand you know 17 but when it crits it's healing for much less than what this guy is going to be healing for on his regenerate now and this is important because this is also an ap cost of none so not only that Look at the mana cost. Our mana cost is 33, whereas our normal enchanter's healing cost is at a 78, right? Now, obviously, if I were to build a pure healer, uh, we would be roughly around the same area we are now, right? Except we would have more stats put into uh, crit rate and crit you know, damage so that the heals will be much, much bigger. Now the advantage to the enchanter build that you guys have seen in my previous videos is that all of this stuff is very easy to get a hold of. You can farm it really easily. However, the vestments monk is much more difficult to farm for. The enchanter does not have as much survivability as the vestments, right? Our vestments monk actually has dodge of 75 percent which means he can actually be on the front line with your 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 melees he can be mitigating the damage he also has 
the same types of skills that are going to keep him and your teammates alive. Now, let's go ahead and check out his skills real quick. Uh, we'll start in the light category. We have regenerate. Then we go empowered light and empowered light two. Our shields are a lot smaller on this character. And you could also go without seal of protection and seal of might. However, you might as well keep him because he's going to be in the front line with your melees, right? So it's not really that big of a deal. But once again, the shields are much weaker than the enchanters. And that is purely because the enchanter is getting uh, plus healing, right? So the reason our shields are much smaller is because our gear on here has healing given. And this is what primarily uh, is going to affect your shields and your heals. Uh, we don't have that luxury on the Vestments Monk uh, because these are giving us mana cost reduction instead, but we do get 12% per. So we're going to be getting 12% per helmet, also our chest piece, and when we eventually do our staff, we should get, I think it's another 12% on there as well, or maybe a little bit more. It all depends. Uh, we're not going to waste our resources on a level 27 staff. We're just buying our time, right? Uh, the other cool thing too is once we get an actual tier 2, tier 3 staff, his damage is going to go up significantly. It's not going to be a lot, but it's going to be more than nothing, right? Uh, whereas if this guy were to counterattack, he would actually heal the enemies. <laughs> so like if he performs an opportunity attack, he will actually heal whoever he hits. Um, I'm sure the developers are working on a way to, to mitigate and fix that to where it'll actually do damage uh, in the future. That would be nice, but we will see. We will see. Now, going back to the skills, as we said, we do have the shields. The shields do not mitigate as much for our, our, you know, our other units as the enchanters will, but we do get glory just like our enchanter gets. We also get brilliance, which is going to give us even more stats. We are getting redemption, which is going to save a party member, which is freaking amazing. And we also get ascendancy. Now you can use this on yourself or you can use it on your, your primary damage dealer. This, no matter what, is going to be win-win for you because this is 40% stats boost across the line. Now, we also spec into Shadow, and that is for the utility of Ghost Armor, which is going to mitigate damage for a total of two turns once, right, on anyone. And we also get a Blind, which is going to further mitigate damage by not allowing units to range your units as well as it's going to make whatever mob is standing next to your tank only focus that tank or whoever's nearest to your tank they're blind so they're going to go to whatever's the closest to them and attack them right there's no rng it goes straight to him uh, we also are, are specking into dark pact which is going to increase the effectiveness of our damage and healing skills by 30 percent at the cost of 20% of our health, which doesn't matter because, I mean, at this point, at level 70 with this build, we should not be getting one shot because we should be dodging quite a bit. And with 5,200 health, uh, we got a, a lot of wiggle room in the level 70 era or tier three zones of play. Now, we also get further reduction and we'll show you guys that in a second. Now we're also getting an additional 25% health from endurance one and two, as well as 25% more max mana from contemplation one and two. We also spec into meditation, which is going to put a target ally into a meditative state, restoring 20% of their health and their mana. So this is even better than what we would get from specking into the light side if that makes any sense uh, we also have willpower which every 10 percent of our health that we are missing also is going to increase our damage reduction by four percent so as soon as you get hit once you're going to be getting a 40 percent reduction right or 
it's going to cap out at 50% with willpower on. So you're, you're going to be very safe with this build as opposed to others. And we also are specking into soul cleanse, which is basically the same thing as purify, except this one doesn't cost any AP. And when you're removing status effects, this is also going to give that target 10% of their max health back. So say they get poisoned or they get a debuff, like a stun or something, you're going to at least give them a 10% heal. And it's only going to cost you 16 mana and it's going to have zero range. Whereas if we look at our enchanter, our enchanter is going to cost 104 mana and one AP. So each of these roles, each of these characters, these support characters plays a different role, uh, but one is going to have a little bit more survivability, whereas the other one is going to be able to provide much more protection, right? We're going to be able to buff our tank with more resistances to cold, electricity, and fire, as well as we get more access to different blinds in this build, as well as our purify will remove all negative status effects on a target, right? So this build also can have the potential to heal more if you were to convert it to a more of a healing based build over the support role. Now the vestments monk also gets strength, which is going to give us for every point of might, we're getting 0.33% damage and healing. Now this is just going to further go up as you get higher tier levels of all the pieces of gear you saw on our character. Uh, we're not anywhere near maxed on this vestments monk. Now, and the reason this build is able to work the way that it does is based off of perfected soul. Now, perfected soul reduces the value of all stats by 66% and sets all of your stats to the value of your highest stat. So that's why this build has so much diversity in stats or so much stat points allocated everywhere is because we are focusing on intelligence and that is what's dr the driving factor for giving us all the increased stats elsewhere. That's why we have so much dodge. That's why we have so much crit rate. That's why we have so much crit damage. You're gaining a metric crap ton of stats and you're also getting reduction in mana costs and you're getting survivability and the list goes on. This is in my opinion, a very good, build viable it can run with your tanks it can mitigate damage from other mobs because it's going to be dodging it's going to be doing amazing things now let's go ahead and check out where you can find most of these pieces of gear we're also going to check out best in slot and if you can't get the best in slot where you can farm the second best types of gear to get you started on the way you know what i'm saying you won't have the same mana reduction, but you will have the ability to at least have similar main stats. It may not work as well as when you get the vestments, but it will do well for you. So let's go ahead and check that out. So first off, uh, the best in slot staff for this build is going to be the ancient staff and that's because you're getting plus 25 percent mana as well as the nine intelligence is your base stat now that's going to go up significantly with the tiers it's it's gonna climb up there like you're you're looking at some really heavy stats if you look at our amulet of the cunning and or any other amulets or whatever we have that's tier three, that the, their base stats are six and it tops off at a 96. So you can only imagine what a nine intelligent base stat is going to top off at, at a tier three item level. It's gonna be up there, probably like a hundred plus, 120 plus, right? That's pretty insane. Now, as we look at our backup weapon, if you guys don't have the ancient staff, you can always look out for a rare 
crystal rod. Now, if you find a tier three crystal rod, this one is only one intelligent point behind the, the other staff, the ancient staff. The difference is, is the crystal rod is a lightning staff. So you could also use that when you're counterattacking or you're just regular attacking while you're waiting to have something to do as a enchanter, a vestments monk enchanter, you basically are able to put debuffs of shocked on enemies. So that your DPS units can actually deal 10% more damage to whatever unit you're auto attacking. Pretty, pretty cool. And this one's easily farmable from the Ember Forge War Machine. Believe it or not, look at that. Uh, whereas this one is global loot. So you just kind of have to buy your time and wait for it to drop. Now, best in slot helmet is a global loot item. It's the crown of mana. Obviously seven intelligence, you know, 15% mana cost reduction, insane. If you can find one of these, it's tier, you know, three, you're in like sin. However, because it's global loot, it's got a very rare chance to drop. Uh, but until you can get that item, we have the scholar's hat, which is just one intelligence point behind it. And it drops at a 15% chance from the Sultan. Uh, you could probably get a tier three, one of these, and, and it would be able to last you until someday when you do find that lucky little global loot item <laughs> called the crown of mana, right? Maybe we'll see. It, it is very rare for these things to drop, but when they do, it's, it's beautiful, right? So let's go ahead and check out best in slot for this build for your chest piece is going to be the energy vestments. Same thing, global loot, very hard to find, uh, but when you do, you're going to love it, right? This one is also seven intelligence that caps out at, uh, however, as you guessed it, you can find the scholar's attire from not just the Sultan, but the countess at a 20% chance to drop. This is a 5% higher than the uh, Sultan. And once again, it's only one until one intelligence under the vestments robes. So pretty cool. You cannot complain about that. This is definitely a good stand in and you know, you'll have access to a tier three of this before you will of the energy, you know, vestments robes, right? And you're able to still do this build without the best in slot. Like it's very manageable. So the, the ring and amulet, uh, they used to not be, they used to be only global, right? global loot. But now after they've added the avatar of Zotek, you are able to target farm the sunstone ring. And this is definitely your best in slot. And the cool thing about this is with the sunstone stuff, you're getting the chance on being struck to blind whoever hits you. So they most likely will not be able to hit you when you run away. If you need to back out and heal up, your tank will be their primary target because they should be blinded after they hit you. Right. And then you have the sunstone necklace, which now the sun queen, actually, I think the sun queen has always dropped this. Uh, but this also has a chance to cause blinding really cool. Right. And I mean, you really cannot ask for easier items to farm. I mean, like the Sunstone or the Sun Queen is a fairly easy unit to deal with. Uh, so I think the hardest parts dealing with any of those guys that do blow up, I forget their names, um, the Sappers. The Sappers are pretty brutal, uh, but I don't think there there's not that many of them in the desert area. Not as many as there are in some of the later acts and stuff like that. All right, guys. So with that, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this build. This build is a build you will be able to use at level 70 plus. It is very attainable. Most of these items are not hard to come by except for obviously the global ones. But as you can see, there's not much difference between the global items and the ones that are farmable. 
it's one point off. That's not bad, in my opinion. Now, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this build. Uh, it's not too crazy, and it's very different from what you're probably used to seeing among other builds, right? So I think that this build is very viable past level 70 uh, just because of how much survivability it has. You could also even go further into the shadow spec. You could probably even honestly make a necro variant of this. And maybe we'll revisit that with a necro variant and uh, we'll let you guys decide what you think because dark ritual is very strong in the later levels as well as having soul link and other things i mean there's so much potential with these monk builds you can do so so much but anyway guys signing out we'll see you guys in the next one take care